What's going on growers? It's James Prigioni coming to you live from Jersey today. Me and Tucker are going to share with you five uncommon veggies everyone should be growing in their summer garden. These plants thrive in the summer heat. Let's go! Now that the weather has shifted to intense summer heat, we also need to shift what we're growing at this time of the year. So in the spring, I like to grow a bunch of different lettuces because I love eating my salads, but now that it's getting super hot out, it's a little tougher to grow some of your lettuces because they really start to bolt. I still have a few lettuces grown down here. You can grow them in partial shade, but we're heading into the second week of July and soon it's gonna be so hot out over 90 degree days and it's just a little tougher to grow lettuce. If you do wanna to try to grow lettuce at this time of the year, you wanna make sure you grow it in partial shade and use some heat tolerant varieties like the slow bolt leaf lettuce. But what me and Tuck love doing is growing a number of other highly nutritious greens at this time of year. The first veggie everyone should be growing in their summer garden is Malabar spinach. I like growing the red Malabar spinach. I'll take you over to a plant right now, back here. So red Mal Malabar spinach has thick, glossy leaves and it does fantastic in the intense summer heat. This is a climber, so you wanna make sure you're growing it up a trellis, like here, or even a fence. I've got another one growing back there. I have grown this in containers too and it grows fantastic in containers. Again, just make sure you have a fence for it to grow because this thing's really gonna climb large. One thing about this plant is it's actually a perennial in the tropics, but here, it just grows as an annual because it's really frost sensitive, but it's fantastic to grow as an annual for a number of reasons. One thing is that it self seeds so easily. So I planted years ago, red Malabar spinach in the back here, and a lot of these have just come up on their own. Like this one right here, self seeded itself. The one right next to me here, which isn't doing great, but that's self seeded itself also. So it's kind of one of those things where it almost feels like a perennial because you only have to plant it once and then let it seed it and it will keep coming back year after year. Let's get a taste of it. You can eat the leaves when they're raw, just like this. Like I mentioned, it's, it's, a, it's a glossy texture. They're pretty thick. And uh, it's known to be a, a little mucilaginous, so compared to other greens, but I still really like the flavor of it. Let's get a taste right now. Mm. Strong, earthy flavor, relatively mild. A little mucilaginous, like I mentioned, like a, almost kind of slimy, but it's not off-putting at all. It's really great to add into salads. That's one way I love using it, but it's also good to add it to stir fries and stuff. This plant is highly nutritious, so it has high levels of vitamin A, C, and E, and you can even juice these greens because it, it's got so much uh, you know, water and stuff in them, and it's a really healthy option. Another fantastic thing about red Malabar spinach is that it grows so beautifully. Some people even grow it as an ornamental, so you get that extra bonus. Tuck thinks it's definitely uh, approved. He doesn't like this green, but he's looking for him fishing for a snack. If you love seeing Tuck in the videos, spam some hearts down low. And let's move over to the second veggie everyone needs to be growing in their summer garden. The second uncommon green, or I'm calling them veggies for now, that everyone needs to be growing is actually not a veggie at all. This is the Moringa tree. This is a perennial tree, but I'm growing it as an annual because it grows so quickly. I've never grown it before. This is my first time ever, so I really want to get a taste of it. Something about this plant that's amazing is you could eat almost all parts of the plant. The leaves, the seeds, so it's a, it's a fantastic green. Let me get a taste of these uh, leaves because I've never had one before. So just pick a leaf off. You can go full giraffe mode on this thing and just eat the leaves just like, just like a giraffe would right from the tree. So let's get a taste of it. Mm. really reminds me of arugula, and it has a little bit of that, that sharpness at the end, like in brassicas, because it contains mustard oils, and those are the compounds found in brassicas like cauliflower and cabbage that make them a bit, slightly bitter. Really decent taste to it though, it'd be great to add to a salad. I think it's just an incredible plant. It's known as a superfood because it's so highly nutritious. It has le high levels of vitamin A, C, zinc, iron, potassium, and one of the fantastic things about this plant is that it has high levels of protein in the leaves and it contains all nine essential amino acids. So absolutely a winner. Definitely good to sprinkle into the garden. And this particular variety, it is a dwarf variety from India and it's uh, bred to stay nice and small. 
So it's perfect for growing in containers just like this. So I think everyone should get a Moringa tree planted. You can plant it in a pot, you can plant it in your garden and uh, grow it as an annual. Before we move over to the third uncommon veggie, it looks like Tuck wants a snack. Let's grab him a carrot. Want a carrot boy? I'll grab one from here. This looks like a decent one. Snap off the end for him, bring it over. What do you think boy? Tuck, over here boy. Here you go. He almost took the piece that I snapped off. Looks like he's a little bit hot too, so we'll see if he wants some water also. Want some water first, boy? It's definitely a scorcher out here. I don't think he wants the water though, he wants the carrot. Let's wash it off a bit for him. What do you think, boy? Yeah, we'll let him go to work on that. Let him hang out in the shade, have some fresh carrot. He's a pretty good guy. We wanted to mention while we had you here to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab one of the grow shirts for summer and we're still even selling the gardening is life t-shirts if you want one of those. And don't forget to check out the fertilizer too. So he's having a blast out here. Pretty good stuff, right boy? And we'll move over to the third veggie now. The third uncommon green or veggie everyone should be growing in their backyard is amaranth. This one is known as a nutritional powerhouse as well and it grows so well in the heat of the summer. Baker Creek calls it the go-to green in the midsummer when everything else has bolted. This variety right here is, uh, is Chinese multicolor spinach. So this isn't a true spinach, just like the Malabar spinach isn't a true spinach. This is amaranth, but it just has so many high nutritional value to it. It's a, it's a great plant overall. Let's taste it. Let's get some of the leaves. The leaves are best you can eat them raw, but they're best when they're young and tender. And this is supposed to be one of the sweetest, uh, most delicious varieties of amaranth. So let's just, we're gonna cut this one, the whole plant out, cause I wanna thin them down to one plant. So let's get a taste of some of the leaves real quick. Mm. Sweet, mild, has that like, uh, has, definitely has a spinachy flavor to it. Really good stuff. Definitely a winner and uh, not to mention how beautiful the plants grow. Let me just have uh, one more quick bite actually. Cut this one out, just so we can thin them out and eat the extras. Mmm, fantastic. This isn't the only kind of amaranth that I'm growing. And I use the amaranth in more than one way, not just for food, but also as a trap crop. Let me bring you back to amaranth I have growing by my cucumbers and show you how that's doing and talk a little bit more about how amaranth has more than one function. Back here, there's some amaranth that I've been growing for years. I just let it self seed and it just comes back year after year. This you can eat as well. Take some of these young leaves here. Try a taste of these ones compared to the other one. A great thing about amaranth is it grows so quickly. It's super drought tolerant and it's just an overall really easy crop to grow. The amaranth that I showed you, the Chinese multicolor one, that only takes about 30 to 40 days till you can start harvesting and eating it. So it grows really quick. Let's get a taste of this. A little drier, kind of not as juicy as the other one. Decent flavor, but the Chinese multicolor one was definitely better and definitely sweeter. So you'll notice I've got a lot planted here, but look, look over here where it's growing too. I allow all this amaranth to grow right next to my cucumbers because this amaranth works fantastic as a trap crop. Heading into late summer, which we are now, um, the cucumber beetles are gonna start coming out like crazy. But the thing is, the cucumber beetles really love the amaranth. So I allow all this amaranth to grow. The cucumber beetles hit the amaranth and attack that instead of attacking my cucumbers. So not only am I getting a little food crop out of it, I'm also getting a trap crop. And that means more cucumbers in the future. So everyone should get this in their garden, plant it next to your cucumbers. It's a great companion for cucumbers and get a couple little harvests out of it as well. The fourth uncommon veggie everyone should be growing is purslane. Here's some right here. This is often considered a weed, but you shouldn't look at it like that because this plant, the leaves are super high and an excellent source of omega-3 fatty acids. I don't even have to plant it around here because it just comes up on its own. Let's grab some of the leaves and taste it. You can eat the leaves, the stem. Let's get a taste of them. This thing is super adaptable and it grows fantastic in dry, arid climates. So it's uh, kind of one of those plants that you just let it do its thing, you don't even have to worry about it. It'll just keep kicking out food for you. Mm. The leaves have a fantastic uh, texture, a nice little crunch to them, and a bit of like a lemony flavor. They're 
so incredibly good. So wherever I see purslane pop up, like here or over here, or even here, I always let it grow because you really want to have this one in your garden. It's such a good performer in the heat. This is said to be one of Mahatma Gandhi's favorite all-time veggies or plants. So, I mean, it must be a real winner. It's easy to grow, it's nutritious, it's adaptable. What I like to do is I'll let this thing go to seed and then it self seeds on its own really easily. So I'll just let it go to seed, come back in the spring, I mean, and early summer, and I'll just see it popping up everywhere. Another great thing about it is it's super easy to identify when it's young. So when you see purslane growing in the garden, make sure you let it grow. The fifth uncommon veggie everyone should be growing is a bit more common than the others, but according to Bill Mollison, people in North America just do not plant this enough. This beautiful veggie is Swiss chard. Look at the color of it. This is the Bali red Swiss chard. An excellent green. And look at the, look at the silver beet ones over here. So this is a nutritious plant containing high levels of vitamin A, C, and K. You can eat the leaves raw and you could cook up the stems. Let's get a taste of the leaves. Let's just see. Try them raw. Mm. High earthy flavor, uh, nice water content, a bit bitter at the end, but overall a great green. This thing, this plant is highly adaptable. You plant these things in the spring, they keep kicking out food all summer long and they grow deep into the winter. This is one of the plants that I can grow all year long under a cover. This is a cut and come again green. So you could come out to it, grab some of the leaves and it will just keep, keep producing more and more. So you wanna harvest this thing often. You can see I just have so much that needs to be harvested. Look, there's like four different colors right in there. This is the silver beet Swiss chard. We've got a bit of the orange, the green, the red in the back, and the pink. So I mean, this thing's basically an ornamental. It's so beautiful, but it's also an excellent plant to grow. I've got some more Swiss chard planted over here. I think this is the orange Oriole one. So I'm basically planting Swiss chard in every bed. It's a nonstop producer and an absolute winner. So you gotta make sure you're getting some Swiss chard planted in your garden. It wouldn't be right if I didn't leave you with a bonus veggie that grows through the summer. This one isn't as uncommon as the other woods, but it's still something everyone needs to have in the garden. I'm talking about kale. So kale is a nutritional powerhouse as well, known by many as a superfood. One of the amazing things about kale is there's so many different varieties, like the dino kale, my favorite, one of my favorites, the lacinato. We've got the walking stick kale, the behemoth of a plant. We've got the Dazzling Blue, which is probably my all-time favorite variety. The color, the beauty, the flavor, it's all there. Let me grab a piece. And then we've even got the Scarlet Kale. Look how incredible that one looks as well. So you can eat kale raw. Let's get a taste of it. And one reason I think kale is so great is because it, uh, it grows through the heat of the summer and it, well, it basically just never stops. So kale will grow early spring through the summer into the winter and I grow this year round under my covering. Some varieties like the red Russian kale, they will survive here in zone A without a covering, surviving the hard frost all year long, producing food. Let's get a taste of it. Mm. Mm. Sweeter than the Swiss chard, nice uh, cabbagey flavor and it gives you that brassica flavor that you're missing midsummer when a lot of the cabbages and stuff are finished. Our cabbages are almost done. Some of the late varieties are still massive and have cabbages, but after this is gone, we're still gonna have our kales producing so much food. We could juice them, we could cook them, we could eat them raw. So many options. You gotta get this one in the ground. Everyone should be growing kale. It's like one of the highest value crops, I think, in the whole entire garden. Those are our six uncommon veggies because we added the one bonus one. Let me know down low an uncommon veggie that we might have missed or a green that thrives in the summer that never stops producing and one we have to get in the ground. I didn't mention lamb, lamb's quarters. That's a good one too, but I figured I'd stick with the other amaranth. 
that's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck really hope that you get some of these veggies planted in the ground. Not only do they thrive in the heat of the summer, one of the toughest times to grow some fresh greens that you can get some delicious snacks from, but they're also, basically every one of them, really nutritious, really good for you, and great additions to your overall diet. So we really hope you guys get some of them planted. And like the Moringa tree, I think that's so cool, like such a unique idea. I mean, I didn't come up with it, but planting that tree as a annual and then kind of letting it come back every year, this way we get all the advantages of it. And like I showed you, you can even grow it in a pot. So basically anyone can do it. Me and Tuck had a blast out here. We hope you did also. We want to mention to check out the merch down at jamesprigioni.com. Grab a grow shirt, grab a gardening is life shirt, and be part of the team. We also wanted to mention to check out the fertilizer down low. This is what we're using to grow basically all of our plants in the garden, and we think it works really well. Another thing I wanted to mention was a thank you to one of our new channel members, Lauren Griggs. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. Look at the size of the uh, tomatoes behind me. They're gonna start turning soon. Look at the sets. And we've got so many tomatoes planted. The harvests are gonna be massive. I can't wait to run around with Tucka, with a smile on my face, just grabbing everything. He went inside because it's wicked hot out right now. We're at the time of year, we are, there's like a four week period where it just gets so incredibly hot. That's one of the reasons we wanted to make this video because it's really tough around here in zone 7A to grow lettuces and stuff at this time of the year, but we still wanna get our greens. So I think these plants are great options and uh, we wanna equip you with the tools to make sure you can grow food year round and always have something coming in and uh, that's what we hope to do today. We had a blast out here. We hope you guys got something out of the video. Tuck and James will be back at you again real soon. We out.